Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, today is our second session of um, our newest FireEye technology we would like to show you today. So um, this morning we showed you uh, Mandiant Security Validation. If you missed that, make sure you check that out. Uh, we will um, put it online in a, in a few hours or maybe tomorrow. Um, there's also very cool and interesting stuff. Uh, this afternoon, the focus is on Cloud Advisory. Um, I brought an expert, and that's uh, Marco van der Aar. He's a consulting sales engineer in MIA. So um, with this, Marco, um, please give us some more information about Cloud Advisory. Yes, thank you, Stein, for the introduction. And today, it's my pleasure to introduce you to one of the latest additions in the FireEye product family called Cloud Advisory. For today's presentation, I created the following agenda. First off, I will briefly discuss some of the challenges that you will likely experience when you use a cloud or multi-cloud environment. At that point, I will introduce you to the Fire iCloud Visory solution and take you on a journey into the platform, showing how it can help you in mitigating all the, the challenges that we mentioned. Along this journey, I will demonstrate the many capabilities that are part of the solution. We will end off with a short recap, and if time permits, followed by a Q&A to address any remaining questions. Chances are high that in your company, one or more cl cloud-based solutions are already being used, or that you're actively using a cloud-first strategy when it comes to renewing or replacing current business applications. At that point, your cloud posture might very well consist of multiple clouds managed by different teams within different business units. This creates challenges like not having full visibility in all cloud workloads, creation of non-consistent policies in each cloud environment, and ultimately a struggle to maintain proper governance due to lack of visibility in risk and exposure. This is also something we often hear from our customers as it's reflected by these quotes. It will not surprise you to see that you are not alone. Cybersecurity Insiders did a survey of over 400,000 cybersecurity professionals last year and asked them to identify the biggest operational day-to-day -day headaches that they encounter trying to protect their cloud workloads. As you can see, this slide shows up the top four challenges that were identified. Working left to right, real-time visibility in cloud infrastructure is a real challenge, potentially delaying detection of critical threats. Many organizations are also using multiple disconnected methods of adding visibility and monitoring to cloud configurations in use, causing unnecessary complexities that often lead to knowledge gaps for your team. And finally, lack of continuous compliance validation and governance of policy controls leave enterprises exposed to great risks. Now that we have seen what the industry professionals are telling us, let's also take a look at what our own experience has shown us. With our Mendiant consultancy branch, we have a unique lens into cloud security, both from breaches we respond to, as well as from our various cloud assessment services. We observe customers are using multiple disconnected and often manual methods of discovering what is in their cloud. We also see that misconfiguration is still the leading cause for cloud breaches. And finally, we observe customers are struggling to quickly remediate incidents and also lack guardrails to prevent them from happening. Based both on these concerns and observations, we can conclude that a potential solution should provide the following desired business outcomes. First off, full visibility in workloads applications and microservices, both from an asset point of view, as well as network data traffic related to these assets. 
Second, a cons consequent use of micro segmentation and least privilege to better withstand any attack by improvement of detection, alerting, and even blocking or quarantining attacks. And third, be able to proactively assess any multi cloud configuration against both compliance standards as well as industry best practices. And with that, I would like you to introduce you to our solution, Fire iCloud Visory. It is a control center for cloud security management that, deliver, that delivers that much needed visibility, compliance and governance to any security environment from a single console. With Fire iCloud Visory, we provide support for the three main public cloud solution providers, Kubernetes, and also for OpenStack, the last one being unique in the market currently. Native integrations provide Cloudvisory with continuous discovery of assets, events, other details and security controls, as well as with their associated network flows. So how can Fire iCloud Visory address these challenges that we have been discussing? Over the next 30 minutes, I will take you on a journey to cloud, to multi-cloud security, as I will walk you through a series of actions that you can perform in the platform to solve the security challenges and ultimately take control of your multi-cloud security posture. We'll start out with visibility, as it is the foundation for any cloud security strategy. We'll demonstrate how Cloud Visory's continuous discovery provides deep visibility and context in your cloud assets, workloads, and even network behavior to put you in the best position to uncover risks and threats. Next is compliance. Now that we have visibility into our assets and network behavior, we are able to apply over 1,400 built-in compliance checks, along with options to remediate to identify and manage your risk posture across all of your environments. And we'll end with governance. We'll show how Cloud Visory's policy orchestration and micro segmentation can enforce policies to reduce attack services and prevent intrusions in your multi-cloud environments. So let's get started. In the first part of the demo, I will show how your team can gain visibility into assets and workloads that are in your environment and what their current state and configuration consists of. Secondly, we will show how network flows are moving in and out and also within your cloud environments. And with that, let's go into the dashboard. So here I'm logged onto the dashboard of the solution. Think of it as a central window into all of your cloud assets and their associated risks. We'll dive into the risks shown on the top of the screen later in the demo. Let's focus our attention first on the second half of the screen. Listing all of your discovered cloud assets broken out by cloud provider. Cloud Visory performs continuous discovery of these assets leveraging each cloud provider native API calls, so no agent is required. So how can we use this data? Let's say I want to know how many VMs I have today in AWS. How would you do that today? Chances are you'd have to fire up your AWS console, log into each AWS account, each time expanding each region and each VPC, to come up with a comprehensive list. With Cloud Visory, this data is one click away. You will be able to click on any of the asset counts and the tool will return you with a dedicated search interface showing the results. So here is a list of all my VM type of assets in AWS. Now let's say I want to expand my search to see all VMs across all of my service providers. I can simply update my search filter in this case, either by using the search option here 
or simply by removing the selected option uh, in our previous uh, filter. You will notice now I am returned with a listing of VMs, including both AWS as well as Google Cloud Platform. For each asset, you will be able to drill down to see the latest state, including deployment parameters, attributes, tags, and metadata. Additionally, Cloudvisory enriches the state data pulled from cloud provider APIs, which with context, including security controls, and also results from the most recent compliance checks. So in this case, we have the security group that is attached to this asset. We can click and it will show you the current uh, state of, of the, the, the security group that is uh, attached. For the compliance check, we can see that in the latest check, three of them have failed. Cloudvisory maintains this latest state of any asset as well as historic records. All of this data is easily searchable, allowing for troubleshooting and investigative activities. As you can see, it is easy to understand what assets are in your cloud environments and what is their current state. So we have covered how we can provide real-time visibility into what assets are in your cloud and the state of their configuration. Next, let's focus on the visibility Cloudvisory can provide into our network flows that are traveling in and out and within our respective cloud environments. We agentlessly collect network flow logs and turn those into visualizations to provide you with a clearer picture of network behaviors. In this demo environment, I am collecting network flow logs from AWS. Network flows between assets are represented by lines and the arrows are showing the direction of the communication. So let's say I want to understand the communication it is going into and out of my AWS environment. With just a few clicks, I can see all of my network flow events. Additionally, you might notice that we layer on our track Intel to highlight if a particular IP has been categorized as malicious, as shown by, as, as shown by the red triangle icon on the bottom of the screen. Like all interfaces within Cloudvisory, we have the ability to dig deeper and use this functionality for ad hoc queries, investigations, and even hunting. So from this view, I can easily start to see where I have threads matching across all of my network flow logs. We can apply a filter to just select this type of events. Now I can start to dig into this communication, find out which of these flows have been allowed, which have been blocked, and you can see it's very simple to do that from this interface. So this was the macro level of a cloud environment. What if you want to dig deeper into understanding a particular workload's, workload's network behavior? We can start clicking and zooming in into our environment. Notice when I click on each of the cloud resources, these rings are starting to build out, showing the cloud context associated with the underlying objects. Like before, I am able to click on any object to see a listing of its network flow details and search for them to investigate or even hunt a or even use it for hunt purposes. So in this case, we now have the flow data 
which is just associated with the Web2 virtual machine. But what I really like about this visualization at this level is that it makes it easy to understand the network behavior of your workloads without actually having to go through all the lines of flow logs. Additionally, Cloud Vitory applies machine learning to the network flows we capture for, for, from the workloads in your cloud environment. And we provide network security policy recommendations based on least privilege. We'll dive into this capability of micro segmentations in the governance piece of this demo. And that is how you can leverage Cloud Vitory's uh, ability to gain visibility into your network flows, moving inside, outside, and within your cloud environments. So what does this mean to you? And why does this really matter? Increase visibility into your cloud assets, workloads, and network behavior provides the foundation for your cloud security strategy and puts you in the best position to identify, investigate, and respond to threats in your cloud infrastructure. Keeping up with your ever-growing cloud infrastructure is a daunting task. Our automatic and continuous discovery eliminates the time-consuming efforts of maintaining inventory lists across your cloud environments and improves accuracy of that data. Having this visibility in a central console also reduces the number of tools needed to gather and aggregate this data, resulting in a more efficient process. Now that we have visibility into our cloud environments, Let's walk through how we can layer on continuous compliance checks to review and manage your risk posture across all your environments, to identify misconfigurations and changes to your cloud workloads and controls that expose you to a security breach, and also demonstrate compliance with mandated frameworks as SIS, GDPR, NIST, or PCI DSS. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, sorry. <laughs> the Cloud Vitory dashboard automatically maps your discovered assets to known risks, allowing you to easily review and manage your risk posture from a central interface. You will notice in the top left of the corner there is a risk score. This measures the prevalence and severity of risks on a scale of one to 100, where a score of 100 is the worst possible score, equating to a critical severity failure of every enabled compliance check for every discovered workload. A score of one is the best score, resulting in the pass of every check. So the risk score is showing an aggregate score across all of my environments. But what if I want to understand the risk associated with a specific provider, account, or service? I can simply expand any of the provider windows to get a more detailed view of this breakdown, like this. And if I click on any of these counts, I will be directed to the underlying compliancy checks uh, making up this value. So we can see where risks exist across my cloud infrastructure. Now let's see how we can manage this risk. Let's focus on the critical risks in my AWS environment. From here, we can see the listing of the failed checks the asset types that were impacted, the number of assets that failed those checks, the number that passed, and also the severity. For each check, we can also see the details like this.
digging into the check results of the AWS EC2 instances exposed to the internet, we can see first a description of this particular check. And we also have guidance on how to remediate. On the bottom, we have a detail, detailed listing of assets that have failed this check, and we can start to manage them. First option is to do a remediate. I can select this button and then do a manual remediation uh, for, this, for this asset. If I don't want to push a manual remediation, as an alternative, I can also simply notify the cloud asset owner. We provide a default template, but it can be edited to your liking. If for some reason the, the exception is acceptable, we have to, or the, if this condition is acceptable, we have the ability to create an exception. Here I select one of the assets and then I can start to create an exception. Within that exception, we can designate how long it should last and we can also provide a business reason or justification for it. Now that you have seen how simple it is to begin to manage these risks and address the underlying conditions to put yourself in a better posture, let's take a look and how, on how we can demonstrate compliance to the various compliance standards. We have a compliance report interface where we can simply identify the group of assets that we are interested in understanding compliance on. And we can generate either reports that we provide out of the box, like SIS, GDPR, NIST, or PCI DSS. In this case, I'm going to create a report for the SIS controls. Here I can give a name, I can select the format, I can optionally schedule the report or click on download. As you can see, it is very fast and easy to generate. This report can now be easily exported and shared with your compliance team. With that, let's jump back into the presentation. Okay, so what does this all mean to you and why does this matter? First, you will improve detection of misconfigurations that lead to a breach by leveraging our over 1400 built-in compliance checks that are automatically and continuously assessed against your multi-cloud environments. Second, you'll reduce the time and effort to manage these conditions by leveraging our options for alerting, notifying, and remediating these risks centrally from our interface. Finally, you can easily illustrate compliance to well-established security frameworks and standards without having to perform time-consuming manual audits across each of your cloud environments. Building further on feasibility and compliance, we will now cover Cloudvisory's governance capabilities. First, we will start out with how you can implement policy guardrails to automatically repair misconfigurations in your cloud assets and workloads. Next, we will tackle how you can enforce least privilege across network policies, leveraging Cloudvisory's micro segmentation. As we covered earlier, Cloudvisory continuously assesses your multi-cloud assets against compliance checks and puts you in a position to manually push a remediation or notify the asset owner. But what if you have a specific control that should always be applied? 
no matter what, like applying encryption to all of your S3 buckets. How can we automatically enable encryption on new buckets or on existing ones where it has been disabled? Let's take a look. It is just a simple configuration setting in the compliance check. First, I will select my AWS compliance configuration checks. Here I'm going to search for the keyword encryption. This helps me to identify the specific check that we are looking to configure. Looking at the check, we can see the name with a small description. We can see the interval at which the check is running. And we can also see that remediation is supported and how the remediation uh, will look like. In this, in this case, it will automatically apply a default server side encryption to the bucket. So if I want to set the check to automatically remediate, all I have to do is modify, the, is toggle the button for auto remediation to on. And now whenever this violation is identified, it will automatically be remediated. It's that simple. No need for agents or orchestration software. Since this is a shared demo environment, I'm not going, I'm going to select no to avoid disruptions. So that was an example of government, governance enforcing a specific security control. Now let's focus on what we can do at the network policy level to ensure this privilege across your workloads. For example, let's say our development team has just spun up a new web app inside of your cloud environment. How do you ensure only required communication is permitted to and from this new workload? Let's take a look. Again, I'm going to expand the visualization until I am at the network assets view. So at this point, I'm going to select the VM Web2, which is the server that was being spun up. And I can click on the recommend step. Cloud Advisory, as said before, applies machine learning to the network flows we capture in your cloud environments and returns network security policy recommendations based on least privilege or what we refer to as micro segmentation. Let's take a closer look at this recommendation. On the left of the screen, we can see the attached security groups. In this case, we can see it is allowing unfiltered outbound access, and it allows inbound access over port 8080 for a rather large subnet. Now let's look at the recommended, recommended allowed rules that we provide based on our machine learning. You will notice that the inbound rules that we provided are more specific to, to specific source IPs and also are using a specific communication ports. For outbound rules, instead of using all outbound communication, we specify destination addresses and relevant ports to our database servers. Now that we have these micro segmentation recommendations, we can test them right from this interface and see what would be blocked if we were to provision the security rules. This test allows, this allows us to run the test for a period of time to better understand the implications. After testing the recommendation, you can click the provision button to provision these rules to the provider. After provisioning, a new security group with recommended rules 
will be attached with this workload. At any point in time, you are able to click roll back to roll back these recommendations. So this is a very easy way for you to first identify what least privileged network policies you should implement. Second, begin to safely test them. And finally, when ready, enforce them. Let's take an, a look at another way to leverage this micro segmentation. Let's say you have uncovered that a particular asset in your cloud environment is showing signs of compromise. How would you handle that today? Cloudvisory allows you to quarantine active threats in near real time, preventing the threat from spreading. Let's see what that look like, looks like. In this case, I'm going to select the suspicious uh, VM. From the state on the right side in the properties area, I can change the state to quarantined. It's actually that simple. I'm not going to move forward with this quarantine again because of the shared environment, but let's take a, cl a closer look at the quarantine policy to better understand what can be enforced. Here we have the quarantine group, which consists, as you can see, of a very uh, specific remote address, which only allows inbound connections over port tw uh, 22. There is no outbound rules attached. However, this is completely configurable. So these were two examples of how you can leverage Cloud Fiverr's micro segmentation to protect your cloud workloads. Okay, so what does this all mean to you and why does this matter? By leveraging Cloud Fiverr's governance capabilities, you're able to reduce your mean time to resolve misconfigurations that are typically exploited in cloud breaches. And secondly, you can improve protection of your cloud workloads by implementing recommended micro segmentation policies that enforce least privilege and allow you to isolate active threats in near real time. And with that, our journey to multi-cloud security comes to an end. In the demo, we covered a lot of ground. So let's do a quick recap of what we have seen. We started out with visibility, which is the foundation for any cloud security strategy. We demonstrated how our automatic and continuous discovery eliminates the time, uh, the time consuming efforts of maintaining inventory lists across your multi-cloud environments. And how our central con console reduces the number of tools needed to gather and aggregate this data. Next, we tackled compliance, where we demonstrated how our over 1,400 built-in compliance checks covering well-established security framework and standards allowed for a faster response. So it allows for a faster detection of misconfigurations that lead to a breach. And it also allows for a reduction in time and effort to remediate these conditions. We ended with governance, demonstrating how policy orchestration and micro segmentation result in, in an improved protection of your cloud workloads by enforcing least privileged policies but, and thereby reducing attack services and preventing intrusions in your multi-cloud environments. Hopefully this presentation and demonstration gave everyone a good introduction into the Cloud Fiverr solution. I showed how it provides you with all the needed capabilities to address all key concerns associated with securing a multi-cloud environment. So ultimately, you can start to take full control of these clouds. Before we open up the floor for any questions you may have, one final thing I would like to mention 
is that we just released via iCloud Visory in the AWS marketplace, enabling everyone to take a free trial of the solution and experience firsthand how you could benefit from it. Alternatively, you can also reach out to me or Stein to organize a follow-up meeting or demo with your team. And with that, if there are any questions, please feel free to unmute or use the chat window. All right, thank you, Marco, for this uh, nice presentation and demo. I don't see any questions coming in right now. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, Marco showed his and my email address. Please don't hesitate to, to contact any of us. Um, we'll give you all the information you need if you want a new meeting or a follow-up meeting with a demo. Uh, of course, you can provide it to you. So uh, thank you for joining us today and thank you for um, seeing this uh, on a later time in the broadcast. Have a nice day. And again, Marco, thanks for a, a good demonstration today. My pleasure. And thank you everyone for attending. Okay, goodbye everyone.